Hey everyone, it's Rami, and today I'm going to talk about how I did a bolt mod on this IBM Model M keyboard. This is an awesome keyboard, I've never owned one before, in fact I never used one until I restored this one right here. And this was a gift from EC Myers. Um, I highly recommend watching his streams, uh, I'll put a link to his channel in the description. But he's a writer and he sent me his keyboard that he used to use uh, as a daily driver. Uh, it was kind of thrown around in shipping a little bit and the barrel plate had split in half and so I decided I would just you know take the whole thing apart and just you know I put all the keys in a bag and the springs uh, together in their own thing and I just you know <laughs> what I did was I left it for a while I, I just had it sitting for a long time didn't I was too intimidated to do the bolt mod but then you know when the lockdown started happening I started considering, you know, giving it a try, and it wasn't until just yesterday that I actually started, or not just yesterday, but like in the last month, yesterday was when I actually put it together for the, la for the last time. But yeah, I'm going to tell the story of how I did this, and it was really fun, and it was a great experience, and hopefully this will help you out if you ever decide to do one on your Model M. This particular Model M was made in 1993. Uh, it has the blue badge up there as you can see but it also has the cool features of the older ones like the detachable coiled keyboard i really love these um it has you know obviously every model m has these buckling springs but let's see the back uh let's take a look at the part number of this thing we've got so it's part number one three nine one four oh one and there's the ID and the FRU, made in USA, 1993, January 25th. So, I was sent this keyboard for free by E.C. Myers. Uh, really generous of him to do that. And uh, when I got it, it had been uh, visibly just like damaged in shipping. Aside from the whole shift key problem, that was uh, there was a shift, there was a spring that was broken in the shift key. But the, the rest of the keys were not feeling well. They weren't buckling and they were just very like low springy and no tension whatsoever. And uh, I wanted to open up the keyboard because I knew right away that this thing was going to need a bolt mod. Right when I felt that, because I had read about this before and I had watched videos on YouTube of people doing bolt mods on Model M keyboards. And I knew of this, you know, Achilles heel that this keyboard had. And so... Uh, I, I sat on it for a while, a few days, then I went out to the hardware store and found the perfect fit. I brought the keyboard with me and fitted a screw in, uh, a nut driver actually. It's a 55 millimeter nut driver that you're going to need if you're going to open the Model M up with. And so I used that to open the keyboard up and once, when I opened it up I found a ton of the plastic rivets just all over the place, just like I predicted. And yeah, the keyboard badly needed a bolt mod, but that was just the least of it. When I finally got the barrel plate off, I had noticed that it was split in two, like split clean in half along the, from one end to the other. And this is not just the thing that happens with me. This is actually a common thing. I've seen it happen in other people's uh, bolt mod videos on YouTube. And it's just frustrating, but it's just inevitable because the plastic is so old at this point but luckily Unicomp exists and now if you don't know who Unicomp are Unicomp is a company that was founded by former IBM and Lexmark employees uh, specifically the people from the division that made the Model M keyboards and they slowly bought the rights and tooling and the molds and everything to make these keyboards and they are still making them today and uh, you can buy like a brand new Model M from them, like a straight up brand new manufactured Model M that feels pretty much exactly the same as, as the IBM ones. And they sell all kinds of other accessories too, which is the crucial thing for me. So they actually sell brand new barrel plates and you can just buy them from Unicomp if you split your barrel plate which is amazing. I don't know how they expect you to glue the rivets on to the back of the case. Uh, maybe they know that people are going to bolt mod these things and then they're just going to, you know, let people bolt mod it. But eventually my barrel plate arrived 
And when that thing arrived, I just, I didn't know what, where the hell to start. I just uh, put it aside, I took the keys out, put them in a bag, springs as well in a bag. And I just let the whole assembly sit there for a long time, just forgetting about it. Because it was just such an intimidating project to me. So, real quick, I'm just going to explain the assembly of the Model M and why it needs a bolt mod. So, the assembly, the key assembly specifically, like, not, not the chassis. The key assembly consists of a barrel plate on the top, it's like a sandwich. With the barrel plate on the top, it's a plastic shell with the barrels where the springs come out of and the keys go on top. That's at the top of the sandwich. Underneath those are the springs. They're like these little flippers with springs on them. Uh, it's the entire switch. Those go in each of the holes on the barrel plate. And then on top of that, or, or underneath that is the mat. Like there's this cloth mat that's underneath it. And then underneath that is a triple layer of membranes. There's like a top layer, a middle layer with like the, which separates the two, and then the bottom layer. And underneath that is the metal mounting plate. It's like a metal sheet that the whole entire key assembly sits on. And the rivets come out of the barrel plate from the top of the sandwich and they go through corresponding holes in all of the other layers so I'm talking like the cloth mat the membranes and everything and the metal plate and then uh, they stick through the holes on the other side of the metal plate and are melted into a like a little button on the other side or like a little plastic disc and this is how the keyboard is held together but as you could expect these plastic rivets will break as they get older and more brittle and this is why a bolt mod is necessary for these keyboards, especially mine, which the whole barrel plate had split in half in shipping and was unusable and needed a new one. So the only way to repair this was to do a, a bolt mod or a screw mod. I did try to repair that barrel plate at once, the split barrel plate, but it didn't really work out. Uh, I put epoxy on it and stuff and solder and I tried to like melt the plastic and together, but yeah, I ended up melting one of the barrels <laughs> and that was like yeah you're, you're you're done for with that point so i just had to buy a new one from unicom thankfully they sell them and they sell them for like 20 bucks but the shipping is expensive so it's like 35 when you check out all right then fast forward to march 2021 this is like last month so i brought out the whole key assembly i had it all sitting in a tray with like the you know the keys and everything and the chassis and the assembly and I was like getting ready to do the bolt mod I was like all right I've sat on this long enough it's time to do this so I took out that thing and I started by just snipping off those little pegs those unmelted rivets that um, on the unicomp barrel plate uh, you know before they're melted they're just like little pegs and I went to the hardware store so I could find a two millimeter drill bit as is recommended by you know the, the sites that I read that do this and I couldn't find any, like there's no metrics. <laughs> there's only like, um, you know, inches and stuff. But I went to, I went online and then I got, um, that's where I got my screws. Eventually I watched a YouTube video of some dude doing the, the bolt mod and he used a 1 16th inch bit and that's the closest I could find. So I got one of those. Turned out to be a good choice actually. So then uh, eventually Finding the screws, like the actual hardware to, that I was going to put in there was the hardest part. I had no idea how hard that was going to be. I was expecting drilling the holes to be the hardest part. That actually turned out to be pretty smooth sailing, thankfully. Because I was, um, I was intimidated. Drilling the holes, you really got to get those nice and straight. You can't, like, go at an angle. I mean, you can, but it's, you, you really, there's not much room for error. The screws need to go in pretty straight because if you take if you go at an angle you might risk the the key assembly tilting slightly you know tilting a little bit on one edge or the other you don't want that you just want an even f surface so I had read a specific article on desk authority while the project was you know on the back burner like during that two-year period and where this user had used, instead of bolts, he used these screws and he screwed them in through the back of the, of the mounting plate instead of, you know, like a nut and bolt mod. And I, I had seen this article even before I received the keyboard. I mean, I thought it was just a fascinating 
tutorial. I was always I'm, I was always fascinated by this Model M keyboard stuff, and I remember telling myself if I ever need to do a bolt mod on one of these, I'm gonna do you know this method, and I just remembered it at the time. And yeah, so I had a change of mind and I went with the screw mod method for three reasons. Um, I would have needed like three pieces of hardware for each hole if I was doing a bolt mod. And that's just expensive. Uh, the third piece being the lock washer to ensure that the metal nuts don't come loose and short out the controller PCB. That would suck. That's like even worse than having plastic rivets in there. And then... Uh, the screw mod is just way easier. Sometimes you don't even need to take apart the keyboard to do this. I obviously had to as I was replacing the barrel plate which split. But the third reason is I just think the screw mod is stronger, a stronger solution than a bolt mod. That is just my own opinion. And so I ordered like, you know, 50 M2 by 2 by or M2.2 by 6.5 self-tapping screws. Uh, these were turned out to be really perfect for the holes that I drilled and it was really good because the 16 1 16th inch hole was small but these screws were just barely big enough to get in there and and make a really nice you know just threading through it was just a really nice threading <laughs> but I had also remembered the broken spring in the shift key and could only locate the plastic flipper from that so I don't know where the spring was it was long gone that meant I needed to order another one from Unicomp, and luckily they still sell them, which is awesome. But when I tried to check out, I got a message saying that I could not continue unless I met their $10 minimum purchase limit, which I personally think is stupid. I was in such a hurry that I just found something I could use, like an AT cable to use with my 386 and 486 and Pentium, the, you know, the AT systems. And so waiting for all this stuff was a pain in the ass because I was really anxious to see if this mod would actually work. And yeah, that was just a really annoying period in, in the whole project. But when all that stuff arrived, I swept everything off my table and set up my little keyboard repair station. These little boxes of HD Retrovision, SNES, and Genesis cables were pretty much the perfect size for this. You can see the two Unicomp springs I put over there. The, those, those are the keys I use the least, so I put the Unicomp ones there. Because <laughs> I want original IBM springs. This process of reassembling the key assembly was a much bigger pain in the ass than I thought it would be. Lining up the 50 holes in each of the layers of this sandwich and for the screws is really damn annoying. It's like, every time you line up one hole, some other one will get aligned somewhere else and it sucks. Once everything was lined up though, I squeezed the whole thing together and started threading the screws in. The way they went in was super satisfying, at least for the most part. Some parts had barely enough room to fit a screw in, but once everything was back together and the assembly screwed together, the back of that metal plate felt so much more high quality with those metal screws in it. And on the other side, you can actually see the tip of the screws and they line up perfectly with the surface of the barrel plate. It's like they're not too deep and they're not too high. You just put your finger on it and you can feel the flat like it's awesome. So after that I started putting the keys back on but when I put the colon key on I noticed it wasn't buckling. Like no matter what I did, no matter how I stuck the cap on, it wasn't actually like buckling and I was panicking. I did not want to take the keyboard back apart because I just screwed the whole freaking thing in with the tapping screws. But eventually that is what I had to do. So I took the whole assembly apart, unscrewed everything just so I could reseat that one damn spring and it was dislodged because I sque when I squeezed the keyboard. And so when I put it back together I made sure not to do that again. And I may also made sure not to um, cross thread the, the holes I just created. You really don't want to do that. So when reassembling again. Um, I started cleaning each keycap as I was putting it back on and one by one it was really satisfying seeing the keyboard slowly come together. You know I put the space bar on with that stabilizer and everything, tested every key make sure, making sure it was buckling and at last here is the fully restored and screw modded IBM Model M keyboard. I'm extremely happy with how this turned out. I really love this thing not only because of its legendary status and its amazing switches and build quality, but because I basically redesigned it myself. It feels so good to use a keyboard that I put all this effort and hard work into just to fix again. 
and it sounds amazing. It's the first time I've ever typed on a Model M. It's not the first time I've typed on buckling springs, we've actually got an IBM wheel rider at the library and that has the same exact uh, springs. But typing on a Model M is really special. And in fact, I typed up the entire script for this video on this Model M right here. And it was amazing. Like I honestly don't even want to go back to any other keyboard for typing at least with this. I still use the Northgate Omni key for gaming and stuff, but this is the best typing experience in my opinion. I love this thing. So anyway, that's about it. That's my story with this Bolt mod. It was a crazy experience that I will never forget. And I highly recommend if your Model M is feeling kind of weird, you know, give it a try. It's not as hard as people... It's not as hard as it looks. It's not as hard as some people make it out to be. So yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. That's all I have today. And uh, I'll catch you next time. And uh, enjoy this typing demonstration on my Model M with the screw mod.